Okay, towards the jungle right now. Might need to forfeit over his offlane. This is looking very nice right now for Koikfa to farm up. And we have seen time and time again, Koikfa is one of those players who can take advantage of some early farm and begin to snowball out of control. And oh, Queen yeah. of Pain is one of those heroes who can do it very nicely. Yeah, it's sort of like the Storm, in, uh, which he's played in the past as well. So and Koikfa getting free farm is a bit scary. But again, you talked about Funnick and how he had to kind of just make way in that top lane and just come, come down to this jungle. But he'll be able to, I think get a couple of these stacks. I don't know if you can do it now, only with level 1 sticking Apom with the change. It's going to be actually difficult. He's going to stack he again, it. I think. With help, he can do it, absolutely. But he can also alone. fly up to the high ground there. Yeah, that's it. true. But still kind of tricky to deal with. But as we keep going, Havos gets time lock proc by Demon, who's got the RNG in his favor right now. He has a poor man shield as well, so he shouldn't take too much damage from right clicks alone. He gets some extra agility going his way. If he can get a Chronosphere, um, he's still only level 4, but when he gets a Chronosphere, he can maybe even try to go for a solo kill on Havost, even though he is, I mean, Void doesn't have much yeah. damage really on here, so. And no, Havost will salve up. Plus, with the benefit of that return, he will have to work pretty hard to try to take him down. And, yeah. You know, we'll see how it gets it done. Still, this dynamic duo here in the Wisp lane, the Tony Wisp combo happening it out right now, except for uh, Kuroki, you know, hanging nearby, trying to, you know, get enough XP for himself because it's all about getting that level 6. And, well, if they want to try to begin to do some heavy assault once getting hold of that relocate and shifting around that tiny that would be very favorable but here we go liquid trying to make the first strike here smoke up heading forward Radiance leading the way is going to be his majesty way too on the wraith king but they're going to catch out puppy potentially are they going to pull the trigger on it there goes the heavy nuke the jumping coming out from demon puppy might be in a world of hurt actually stuns him out with a centaur but that is not going to be enough they take him down venison is on the menu tonight boys as puppy will fall first blood going to a liquid yeah that's very nice they they just saw him here sitting in the corner they were able to Radiance jump on him and uh, puppy did get up the nature's attendance but it's only level one it's not going to save his life the sensor conqueror stomp like you mentioned was there havos was nowhere near to help his teammate out and boom that's it first blood baby going to the side of liquid so off to a fast start the problem for them right now i was talking about how well cc was doing in that mid lane not so much anymore um he's been kind of shut out of the lane uh, obviously when you get levels up on kuroki and he's got you know level two uh, spirits and well down bottom all that thought as folks getting caught out he's gonna be the sky with ancient seal the chronosphere is gonna go as well demon wants this kill he's got level six and he is going to find it, it actually goes to bulba using that of course arcane bolt getting the kill nicely done so two quick kills coming out so well, yes, Dendi is forming in the mid lane with Kuroki. Um, they're still getting kills and being effective all over the map. And top lane, Sonic Wave from Koikfa blowing up Funic. One last right click will do the job and gets the kill. No uphill miss for him. Nicely done. Three quick kills coming for Liquid. Wow, Liquid just going on an assault early here. And Navi just not looking like their former self. Really struggling early in the phase, especially when you have Puppy here on the Enchantress. Someone who's been known to get the aggression early here for his team. And still looking for it here in the bottom lane, but he has to be careful. They're picking it out and they're looking to converge once again. Way two revisits Puppy once again, finds him, throws out the Ray Fire Blast, quickly tries to throw out the heal but not be enough. TC shows up. There goes the Centaur Ultimate to save Puppy's life and it is enough to help him out. Havost there to save the day for Puppy. Not going to be so lucky the second go around for Liquid. Yeah, that defensive R button press. And He's really, ha he's, I guess Puppy's really lucky that they had that Centaur Conqueror, or Centaur War Runner Ultimate rather, because he missed his Centaur Conqueror stomp, which would have been huge had he got it connected on TC in order to stop any sort of aggression in the first place. They wouldn't have to waste that R button potentially, but, well, at least Puppy survives, and he's actually having kind of time. He's level four, still doing well, and part of the issue for Liquid now is they don't have the levels on the Wraith King just yet, and, and they don't have the benefit of that jungler. So again, a very greedy lineup that Liquid is punishing early on here, but uh, Dendi is level five, Kuroki is level five as well, so they're getting close to relocate, and all of a sudden, you can't be as aggressive once they start jumping all over the map, essentially. Mm -hmm. Top lane, Phonic did deny out the tower, but Regardless, the first structure will fall in advantage for Liquid. Just a little bit of extra gold to throw into their pocket. And, well, Puppy pulling out the smoke. He is relentless on trying to find the first kill for his team and just kind of hope that's going to be the start of good things to come. Even Havost exchanging over here to the mid lane. Possible rotations continue as they converge possibly up to the top lane or just kind of linger about. But Liquid now, not on the assault too much. Pulling back, you see TC off into the jungle, stacking it up for himself or maybe possibly for others, but just continuing to find resources elsewhere. Yeah, he's actually got a buckler now as well in his inventory, not yet on his person just yet, but uh, while this is all happening, Stampede's going to be off cooldown rather soon, and uh, Funnick is sitting here on the Batrider as well with his lasso ready to go, so they're trying to make something happen in this mid lane. They have the smoke. I don't think they popped it. They're just 
kind of waiting around and just seeing what they could find. Firefly coming through from Funic, and that means TC kind of has to ditch uh, this creep camp. He doesn't want to give any way. He doesn't want to give a free kill away to Funic. He's actually going to TP to the tier 2 tower top lane. While that's all happening, though, Demon's putting pressure on the bottom lane and in the jungle. Uh -oh. Way too looking for Puppy yet again. The great fire blast is going to go. The ancient seal, the right click from Way Too should be enough. But look at that untouchable. Doesn't matter. They'll grab the kill. They'll back away as Dendi and Kuroki were making their way over. They decide against it. They want to go back to farming. They had to ward it out this bottom river area, so Puppy had no idea the rotations were over, so he's starting to feel like nowhere is safe for him, just constantly under Radiant's assault from this liquid team, and they quickly fallen. acquired their second structure for themselves. This has been an extremely strong performance coming out from Liquid in the early laning phase. Yeah, and not only that, but Demon picks up the tower kill, and that gives him a hand of Midas. He's got Treads Midas at 9 minutes in, and the offlane faces Void with 47 CS, third in the game, only behind Koikva and Dendi. Speaking of Koikva, he's sitting on Oblivion Staff, again going to go for that Orkham Levelance. A build that we've seen, I guess, it was probably Korok who pioneered it, at least in the American scene. Uh, on the Queen of Pain is something that we haven't seen in a while because we don't usually see the Queen of Pain too much anymore, although still a very strong hero. Mm -hmm. And he might even just consider building it up similar to his Storm Spirit. I mean, Navi, you may battle the Storm Spirit. We'll just go ahead and grab a Quap and just kind of fill that same role that Koikva did so well in the previous game. Yep. So, well, continue pushing forward. Puppy of Eyes Losum trying to get his first sets of golden XP for himself, and Liquid just kind of abandoned the bottom lane. Demon farms out the jungle on his way out, and Waitu makes the full shift all the way up and over to this mid lane, and we've seen a very quiet Dendi and Kuroki combo over here. Kuroki now level 6, has the relocate. Dendi on level 6 himself as well with too. the drums now, but, uh, you know, when are we going to see them try to move around and get some kills? That's the question, and I imagine that this game is going to bust wide open rather soon. Even though they've shut down Puppy in the jungle, Kuroki and Dendi, you really can't stop them from farming and being aggressive. Avost, he's getting closer to a Blink Tiger, standing at 1,000 gold. Same with Funic. Funic has gotten a bit more farmed. 1,500 gold. He's got a GG branch, boots, and bottle. Once he gets that Blink Tagger, uh, I think that's when they start going. Is yeah. when maybe Funic gets the Blink, and then they start being aggressive with relocates. Mm -hmm. But I think Liquid have played a pretty good early game here. The question is, can they take this into the mid to late stages of this game? If Dendi gets farmed, all of a sudden, you're dealing with a massive freaking rock that just hits you with a tree essentially across the face. I mean, we assume he's going to go for an Aggative Scepter, but yeah. it's not I a mean, bad that, assumption. It, it, yeah. Tiny could be one of the best carries, if not the best carries in the game. I mean, he gets a hold of a full six slot itself, but that's a long way away. And for Navi, it's, it's not looking so good thus far, but the first time they will possibly be able to strike is like you said when Funnick gets a hold of that blink dagger expect him to smoke up and that will be the time for them to strike and it will be on liquid to try to defend it out and one of the hardest things you could do as a bat rider jumping in is going against something like a faceless void yeah. so it's going to be down to Funnick to find the right window of opportunity to jump in there and try to secure a kill yeah so, we'll see if they want to be aggressive. I mean, Funic is very close to that Blank Tiger, and that's actually pretty good timing, considering what he had to deal with in that top lane, and obviously sharing the jungle with Puppy on the Enchantress. Uh, level 6 now for Puppy right now, and it looks like everyone else on the side of Liquid has level 6, with the exception of the Wraith King, who way too still level 4. Um, having a bit of a rough time right now, and going to TC, we see this actually rather often. People like to go for putting points into their plasma field, maxing it out, and their static link as well before they even get their eye of the storm. He put two points into the unstable current, which I think is nice. His mech is actually done at 11 minutes, surprisingly enough. That's an orc at 11 minutes for Koifa, so they're getting their items. There's the blank dagger. Man, there's like whoa, five whoa, items whoa. just came out. This, this UI is doing some serious work over on the right-hand side, and well, I called it out, when you get a blink, you also got to get some of that sweet purple stuff, so expect Funic to blaze it up here in a moment and jump in and get the initial first kill, hopefully, for Navi. Yeah, but at the same time, you look at Liquid, they're smoking up, and they're actually going to run right to Puppy yet again. There's the blink, there's the orc at the right click coming through. I don't know if they'll need much else besides this. Puppy's about to fall and will. Now, Tiny and uh, Kuro are coming over, but they decide against it. Funnick is still smoked up, ready to fly, but... Liquid are just, they're putting on a clinic here of they early are. game aggression with the heroes they have, but TC getting lasted up, he has a mech, he's gonna get tossed as well, he will fall the first kill of the game going for Navi. They finally get on the board, and that's Dendi and Kuroki. Being aggressive, they pop the drum charge, no relocate for that, and they're gonna try to go for this tier 1 tower in the mid lane, we'll see Liquid try to rotate and maybe stop this aggression. Again, Quickfoot does have Sonic Wave, might jump on Kuroki and try to grab the kill here. 
Kuroki oh. running away. He's got a tether. He's going to use it early, but they're not going to chase. They decide against it for some reason. Yeah, I think even Liquid, if they wanted to, could make the full jump in. You do have Demon here now, and he does have the Chronosphere to work with, with only two there, and obviously Funic had already used his lasso and everything. Mm -hmm. I think they could have been a bit more greedy, but maybe that's just a testament to Liquid and their new way of playing a lot more patient and waiting for the right time to strike. And, well, they're pinging out the top lane, and they're feeling that this Batrider might be a good target to go for. Jumping Koikva, blast out the screen, the shout strike to follow. The big Sonic wave to fly out, and one more lingering auto attack will secure it. Koikva moves on to a killing spree here, and Liquid push ahead. 6 to 1. Dyer's yep, so, I mean, Quigfa has done... Attack. And you think about the last time he played Storm, uh, a lot of his kills came a bit later on in the game. His aggressiveness early on has, has been paramount so far. Um, but again, you still have to be careful. Danny's doing a very nice job of farming up. He's got a lot of CS. He's getting closer and closer to his next item. But the problem also is, you, not only do you have to worry about TC and Quigfa, you have to worry about Demon. He's got a Mask of Madness, oh, Chronosphere, yeah. Jumping Midas as well. He's got the attack speed to boot, so Smoke of Deceit Gank again. If they can find out Dendi or Kuroki, get either of these kills, it'd be a huge boon for them. Dendi specifically, if they can take him down, but Kuroki, well, here we go. Mask of Madness, jump in, Chronosphere, it's gonna land on both of them. The Mystic Boot, the silence on Dendi. They're in trouble, Wraith Fire Blast, he'll fall, too quickly killed. Liquid get yet another two going their way. It's 8-1 to one and a tier 1 tower probably right afterwards. This is a dominating performance coming out from Liquid. Very crazy stuff. TC pulls out the Eye of the Storm, but yes, they pull back. They see that maybe some impending trouble could be coming their way. They had already expended some of their very useful skills. Don't want to avoid getting caught out, but step back. Happy with the momentum coming thus far. 8 to 1, the score. I mean, I don't even want to imagine what the gold graph looks like right now. It's already near 5k, relatively early in the game. You know, they did get one tower, actually two towers already acquired, so they're, you know, that does come in handy with that graph, but man. Speechless performance here for Liquid. Yeah, honestly, they they're just playing this exactly like they need to. I mean, they they have the draft that works well with early game aggression, and uh, Navi have yet to use a relocate. That's not their fault potentially. I mean, they just not a lot of options to use it yet. I mean, they don't have any vision either, which is just kind of tough. Havos just gets his blink dagger, so now it's Navi's time. Two blinks are ready to go. Dendi with the damage. Kuroki there. He has two points into overcharge, so that you know it's going to be pretty nice. But while this is all happening, they're looking to make yet another go on Puppy, who's been. Uh, he's he's just been bullied this game, it, I think. It's, it's rough, and I am personally a big Puppy fan, and it's just disheartening to watch right now. Oh, God, here we go. Mask of Madness. If he wants to leap in, he can go for it. There it is. The big leap. No Chronosphere even needed. Funnick is on the way, but a Flame Break is not going to be enough to help out your drafting captain in need. But here we go. Relocate to come. Denny tosses his way to all the way back on top of Funnick. Yep. They can try to take him down, but he has the reincarnate to work with it. There it is. It's going to be by the Hobos. Jumps in with the Centaur. Quickly burst down. Koi Fun gets that bounty, and Funnick moves into a double kill. Looks like Navi are going to try to strike back. Way too will fall this time and ends up going down. It looks like they're going to try to take more here. TC on the retreat. Pops the mech, but he's going to end up falling here. Heavy damage. Finish it off with a toss, and Dendi get a double kill, and as we're beginning to count him out, a uh, very late demon jumps in, does secure one kill, going for the whisk. Can he get a double? He will, but feeds himself over to Dendi. Triple kill for him in the end. 11-6, to six, and well, Liquid had such a strong start that just fell apart Daya's right before them and Navi jump right back with the counter punch redeeming out Puppy's early feed unbelievable fantastic play from Havos Daya's jumping in to stop double edge kill two immediately Koifa couldn't get anything done there that was a bad fight to take for Liquid yes they got the kill on Puppy they needed to get out immediately but the re-engage coming through the relocate coming out Denny doing a lot of work on that team fight as well that's pretty much an Agatha Scepter almost done he's got two of the components already and that's something that they couldn't afford for Liquid they really just, all they needed to do was play patiently, but they couldn't get out. The relocate was something they did not expect, especially after Puppy's death. Fantastic play from Navi to get back into it. You look at the graph, it's still going Liquid's way, but 3,000 now instead of the 5 that it was before. So, Demon being a bit too aggressive throwing his life, where you mentioned the double kill down there happening, but then he just dies instantaneously because of mass, mass increased damage that he's taken. So, uh, maybe slow down a bit. TC wasn't there, he couldn't neck up his yeah. teammates, and... I don't know, we'll see how Liquid decide to play this in the next couple of moments. Yeah, fantastic start for Liquid still, but yeah, time to pump the brakes, shake it off a bit, you know, don't get too overzealous. I mean, you're trying to catch up Puppy very close to that Tier 2, and everyone just kind of showed up to the Puppy, and here we go. It's been all about getting all the Puppy in this one. They scout him out in a bit, but already way too looking to converge and head out elsewhere as he does retreat off back to the base, and well, Liquid do pull back, and 
Now with Navi inheriting all this additional gold and XP coming their way off a very successful Dyer's team fight. Push forward and try to add some additional damage on this Dyer's tier 1 tower in the mid lane. They have yet to take their first tower of the game. And Teddy actually has his Aghanim Scepter now. I mean, I mean 75 gold, unless he dies right now, Dyer's he's gonna have his Aghanim Scepter for the probably the next engagement. The rest of Liquid are ready to go though. I mean, Koif is still here. He still has an Orca that he still got very early on. It's difficult to deal with plus 1 point some odd gold here. If he gets BKB, which he probably should next, he's going to be in Cloud9, but on Cloud9, rather. Yeah, Dendi's still farming rather well. I mean, that's the Aghanim Scepter done. Havos is going to get another item. He's got a Cloak. Uh, you look at Batrider, he's getting close to his 4 staff. So after that fight, they get that next set of items that Liquid had the advantage. You know, they were close to that next set of items. Now, it's Navi right there with them. So, uh, is going to back off. He's going to TP to the top lane, get some more farm, and... Well... Highest in net worth in the game right now, Dendi, 8.3k gold. Pretty much just based on that one, mate. God, he got big real quick. Oh, yeah. Now Dendi with the benefit of that Agnes. Oh, Look at a clean house on this. Oh, man. Navi, very devastating start. They're looking to make things a stalemate right now as we get ready to approach the mid game. And it is looking very nice for them thus far. And Tiny, not only going to be able to hit hard, he can siege towers very, very quickly with the benefit of that Agnum Scepter. Yeah, the Aghanims, the overcharge coming out from Kuroki, the tether move speed. Getting an Assault Kuros later on down the line is going to be huge, but I'm surprised. Even though Liquid, yes, that fight didn't go their way, they could still find fights. As long as they're maybe initiating on, you know, Dendi and Kuroki, they have Chronosphere. So difficult to deal with, but Demon decides that he wants to farm. He wants to go for Maelstrom, get a bit more right-click damage, despite maybe getting blown up in that fight. BKB might be okay in that situation, but that again with a Mask Command, it's not the best choice. So, uh, Koikfa, 2,000 gold in the bank, what's his item choice here? Will he go for the Ultimate Orb? Uh, who knows? No, no, we about the Lincolns last time. It's still a potential option if he wants to kind of go true. down that road or you know BKB or what have you here. We'll definitely avoid the heavy onslaught or the initial stun combo coming out from Dendi. So, you know, we'll see how he decides to take that path. I would imagine something along the lines of some additional survivability for himself so he does not get locked down and blown up like we saw in that fight previously. They want to try to relocate on top. It looks like Fonic is far flying through. He's got a smoke of deceit as well. They're waiting for an initiation. Bulba would be great. Koikva maybe even better. He went for the ultimate orb. Could be the Lincoln Sphere like you were talking about maybe the scythe there's a lot of options here but funnick will back away decides against going for that kind of crazy kill instead they're gonna jump into the roach pit right now for liquid this could be a nice little boon of gold going their way mm -hmm. navi's doing a rotation to the top so without proper obs here they do see it right there but with demon leaping in i don't think they know that this is happening right now so it could potentially be an uncontested roach they do not have the most amount of damage to work with so they will have to work for it especially if demon's going to be doing it all by his lonesome so tc opts to be in the mid lane in the meantime it has to be careful here dendy moves forward but you know i'm waiting it out for the next time maybe funnick wants to rotate around take advantage of that blink and that lasso but for now just accompanied havos flies over sees a wild wing and well, Link belonging to Puppy throws out a sweet little tornado as they begin to siege on this top tier one tower. Yeah, it, now Navi probably know that this is happening. This Roshan has been going on for some time, but it, they, they need to get this Rosh faster. They can even try to defend top lane, or they can just trade it. A tier one top for Roshan is the it's the most common trade in Dota when you think about that dire side. So um, Rosh is going to get taken down. Looks like Quickfoot is going to pick up the Aegis as well. Now they can be a, they can afford to be a bit more aggressive. They're not going to defend top. The Glyph is not there. They're not going to TP in on mass. They're just going to go for this mid tier one tower which honestly Navi can defend and Kuroki and Dendi are already here no need to relocate and there's a couple TP come, TP's coming through as well there's the fortification going through TC's hitting it from the backside way two is up front he has the mana pool recreation in fact he's full mana pool health right now they take down the tier one tower so definitely a trade that goes Liquid's way they get a tier one they get Roshan they get the Aegis they lose a tier one top but not that big of a deal you know, I'm getting a little concerned here for Liquid as time goes on, and they be, you know, Navi side, they begin to build up a little more items. Things could be a little more troublesome. Havos, for example, getting a lot closer to building up that pipe, and that will make things a lot more difficult for Quickfoot to try to burst down the remainder of the Navi team, something they didn't have trouble with in their previous game. So, Navi staying composed here, trying to build up the items they would need to try to begin their first assault onto Liquid and try to furthermore take this game back. Yeah, they haven't actually used a really aggressive relocate. That bottom one was more kind of just, they were out of position and they were just going to capitalize on a couple of the kills. Mm -hmm. So, um, we have to wait and see when the side of Kuroki... Uh -oh. and, and, uh oh Well, speaking of Kuroki, is going to go and he's just a dead wisp. Uh, unfortunately, we'll go down in. Well, the Wild Wing to boot, so Demon gets a little bit of extra farm there, so... Kuroki got a little greedy trying to go for the haste rune, you know, yeah. tethering over to the Wild Wing to quickly get it up, but Demon conveniently happened to be right there. Plus, with the ward vision, they just kind of swiftly blink over and take care of that big old ball. Look at this 
Ancient stacks, so the money is real. are saying anything you can do, we can do better. Ancient stacks have been a thing now for Navi. You saw the one dead he was doing earlier, but uh, Demon just says, listen, uh, I just want to stack this up a bit. Get some more farm. It's going to be great. Mask Man is turned on. He'll go down the bottom. He'll get the farm in the lane and then probably go back to the ancient stack as well where way too can help out. Uh, he's got Vampiric or no points in the Mortal Strike just yet. Bulbas here as well with Arcane Boots already. So um, at some point, I think Dendi probably has to go for a BKB in this game. There's a lot of magic games to deal with. Specifically, Koikba is going to be kind of annoying. And Bulba. But, and, uh, yeah, that too. And the, But the thing is, right now, he just wants to deal with getting some extra armor so that TC and Demon aren't nearly as effective. With if you get an Assault Cuirass, it's huge, plus the armor reduction in general and pushing down towers. Then all of a sudden, Navi have an opening in getting these Tier 1 towers. And in fact, they're looking for this first one of the game. They might push up to the high ground right now. Liquid aren't really in position to defend this. They have a glyph. They're going to use it. And that means that Navi will back off. At least for the moment, they're still playing pretty far up. Koiko finishes up the Orchid, or rather the Lincoln Sphere. There's going to be a static link coming in. TC ready to fight. Blink forward. Stop. Does him like Koiko in trouble. Remember, he's got the Aegis Funnick. Glass up on TC coming through. Now the Corner Sphere about to go from Demon. He's looking to pop it on somebody. He's going to go to Kuroki instead. Taking a lot of damage from a boat. The fight still breaking out elsewhere. Sonic Wave. Dendi getting low. They're going to chase after Puppy instead. Mystic Flare about to fall. Will they get Dendi is the question. Koiko not going any further. Somehow a two for two. And Navi gets to the better end of the trade because they get the Aegis. My goodness. Yeah, I, <sighs> Demon had, you know, tried to split them off and divert oh, the attention elsewhere. Oh, well, what a bait coming through. Is it enough, though? They're still chasing. Way too with the Wraithfire Blast. Might go in a second. Has reincarnation. There's Extreme as well. They knew this was coming. The aggressive play from Avos. Koikba sat in the trees, was waiting for a moment. Way too got jumped on. What a play coming out from Koikba. Very nice stuff. Able to kind of get it back in their favor in the end, but... But yeah, I mean, waiting it out for the Chronosphere, and Demon's highly level, level 16, it was you know, not that long of a cooldown, so, you know, sitting on it a bit, wanted to wait for the right opportunity, but maybe waited a little bit too long, but regardless, Liquid still come out on top, and he does have the benefit of that Chronosphere the next time he does come around. Kuroki and Dendi, match made in heaven here, moving down to the bottom lane, continuing to farm it up, and with the benefit of that Axe, and just the heavy attack speed that Kuroki provides, they can farm up very, very quickly here, and... Now also, Assault Kyrgios on hand, <laughs> he's going to get farmed up really quick and it can get scary for Liquid. Yeah, that's the thing. Dandy survived in that fight too. They were thinking about chasing after him but decided against pursuing. Um, and with him surviving and getting a kill, I believe, or two, that makes that fight almost worth it for Na'Vi. Um, they used the, they expended the Aegis point bug. You saw how fast he went down. Um, that's something I'm concerned about for Liquid is that if Quickfoot continues to die this quickly, it's going to be an issue. Whereas when he plays Storm, it, it feels like he's generally... He's always living for the most part. Never really gets jumped on, and if he does, he uses Ball Lightning away, but they throw a lot of burst damage, and not just through right clicks, but Tiny's abilities as well. So now Navi are starting to control the map, and that's something that Liquid kind of were doing early on in the game and really didn't let Navi in and in at all, so it's interesting to see. Navi now converge, looking to go up and above to the top lane over here, possibly to scout out aggressively through the opponent's jungle, but Liquid not there. Shift it all the way down to the bottom after cleaning out a couple of those ancient stacks. Go ahead and head into the Navi jungle. We'll look it out, and this could end up being a tier 2 for a tier 2 trade, but Tiny. One of the best in the game right now at clearing out towers very quickly, so we'll see if Liquid decide to opt back and consider defending. You can't really base trade against Navi. They're just going to do this every time. In fact, they're going to go for Tier 3 now, so this Tier 2 is not even going to die by the time Liquid have to TP back and defend their Tier 3. In fact, they force the TPs out. That's all Navi wanted to do. They'll back off now, and that's just... An extraordinarily really smart play. Koikla trying to get the tower. The glint is going to go, and that means that the deny is going to fly as well. Um, so, really smart plays coming out from Navi here just to make sure they deny this tower. Yeah, the most rotate all the way down to the bottom. He will acquire the deny on his own tower. Very nice stuff for them. Had they caught a lingering liquid, potentially the relocate could have come there. Kuroki was ready for it, but nope. They will step back, continue to farm this up. They even have the benefit of an alpha wolf following around Dendi. Yeah. Oh, man. It's a lot of damage. He hits pretty hard. He really does. It's, he has a tree in his hand, so I guess that's not a big surprise, but... Dendi's trying to get to level 3 grow, hit even harder, essentially, move even faster, and just be all that much better. And they have a still slight gold deficit of about 3,000, but that can be made up through towers, through fights, which I feel like Navi, as this game goes a little bit later, they're feeling a bit more confident, despite Puppy going down a lot early on, 
Um, the lanes winning essentially in Liquid's favor. Mm -hmm. And look at all these wards that are placed down for the Radiant side in the jungle. I mean, there's so much map control here. It's ridiculous. Yeah, this everywhere. is... This is three bunch of wards they really want to see because they haven't seen Liquid too much in that top lane. They got to figure that they've been farming it up in the jungle, and they have been. It was TC who, for the majority of the time, was farming out those neutral camps, but now Navi want to kind of scout it out and see how the movement's been going, and then they can look for maybe some relocates, jump in there, and try to catch out anyone trying to solo farm in their own jungle. Well, the thing is, though, does pick up the gem, and that's actually going to be carried by way too. He has to TP into the tier 2 tower down bottom, as there's a fight potentially happening. Chronosphere is going to go, they're looking for Kuroki now. Sonic Wave going to fly through as well. They missed on Denny, but the Orkin is going to go. Funic, he's going to just say no, I'm going to force you away, but can Denny get out is the question. He's going to try to fight this. The toss up, they're getting low, almost gets a double kill, but they will survive. Quick is going further. Now TC jumping in the edge of this room, but it's not enough. Way too has the gem. Three dead for Navi. That's the initiation liquid we're looking for. They go to the Roach Pit, it's not up yet. Great things to start getting a nice Chronosphere and able to burst them down. It didn't even matter that Koifa had a brief whiff there of the Sonic Wave. With the help of that Orchid, they could quickly shut him down. And Radiant's unfortunately, no, Denny attack. wasn't quite close enough to get the benefit of that Force Staff to get him out of trouble. So they do take advantage of that, quickly burst down three all day. Man, Liquid still looking to strike back, still well on top here, 18-8 to to score, but really it's a lot more even than that. You can never count on Navi. Now that Dendi's at the point where he has all this farm, Radiant's if they take advantage of one team fight, he can attack. just bulldoze through one of these lanes and make go right into the base. Avos? Doesn't really seem like he knows uh -oh, he's getting he chased. Oh, he just blinked there too. Oh no. To get caught way too starts things off with a rate fire blast here. Havos though promptly TPs, but here comes the jump in. Ash Demon, no, no RNG luck in his favor, and obviously with the Kronos down for another nine seconds, they couldn't quite catch him. So Havos with a quick reaction will TP to safety. So Havos gets out, close call, no Chronosphere expended. Not that he had one. Looks like it just came off cooldown. He actually could have used it potentially. I'm not sure if he had it. No, it was cooldown. It was cool. Okay, like nine seconds. It was close. Well. Just dodging. That seems to be a kill coming out for Demon, but Dendi and Kuroki, it's a smart choice. Knowing that there is still some map control in their favor, they can just go top and and he's not too concerned about the Queen of Pain coming back. In fact, they Funic and Havos are coming through as well, and Quickfa needs to get out immediately. I do love the BKB now acquired here on TC. Something if you can avoid that initial onslaught coming his way, preferably from both Havost and Dendi, he could be into the mix and static link out a lot of damage. And then next thing you know, Navi could be cleared out just from a heavy hitting TC. And you already have a heavy hitting demon on your team. So, and then a quick foot of mix. Like, it's still anyone's game. I still have a little favoritism towards Liquid just because they have a really nice spread of farm amongst most of their team. Whereas right now for Navi, it's pretty much mostly Dendi. Mm -hmm. Havos is there, but as far as dealing out big damage, not quite yet. We, we were talking about in the draft how we weren't sure if Dendi could play these semi-carry heroes or even carry heroes mm -hmm. in the mid lane, but he's done a very nice job. Obviously, he had the help of Kuroki, and he got a lot of CS early on. And even Tiny is kind of a tempo controller to a certain extent. And it's not like this is obviously Dendi's first go around with the Tiny, so... Liquid will make their way into the Roche Pit, and they'll just try to take a free one, or maybe just look for a kill. They are smoked up right now. While this is happening, though, Puppy and the rest of the Navi squad, with the exception of Kuroki and Dendi, are farming in this top lane. Puppy also had, or had now, a centaur that was parked there in the Roshan Pit to scout out if Liquid were going to move in there and didn't see it, but Liquid converging smoke. Moving real quick, they're going to catch out the ball, catch him out with his own big ball, and they will slap him down very, very quickly, take down, coming out from Demon. So, nice pick off, now advantage in numbers, rotate back to the mid lane here, and we'll see if they try to make an assault or maybe consider going for one of these tier 2 towers. Yeah, they can also just back to Roshan, but the problem is that top lane is getting pressured, and they have to have someone TP Radiant's back and defend that sooner rather than later. So you can see that Demon really wanted to get double on that Chronosphere. They would have gotten two kills there rather than just Kuroki, but it's fine nonetheless. The owner's now done for Demon, so all of a sudden this all play case is what turns into your carry, and Koik was more of that utility, utility kind of Queen of Pain getting a site very soon, so Hex is going to be up and ready to go. I don't believe there are any BKBs on the side of Navi, and that's a problem. You can see somebody is building one, that's Funic, but he's the only one. Actually, no, Denny does have his BKB, so I'm mistaken there. Meanwhile, Blink up from Quikfa. Funic, Blink, misses. Now Hex immediately, the impetus damage coming through, the Orchid up. There's going to be the Shadow Strike as well. Can they connect on this? The Sonic Wave gonna fly, Quickfoot gets the kill, Stampede, big stop onto three, Quickfoot about to fall and will. 
I'm not sure if he has buyback. Two are dead already on the backside. Somebody fell as well. That was Bulba. This is not Liquid's fight. They need to back away immediately. Dendi on the run, looking to try to connect on something. Dead for 70 seconds. I think there might not even be a buyback. No, there isn't. Coming up for quick. That's huge. No, this is They're just going to go for the tier though. 3 tower. Yeah, Navi takes a fight, and with the likes of a tiny, if he gets the, the opportunity to kind of go into the high ground and a DD on top of it, this guy hits for 629 damage. Jump in, stun will unfortunately not catch as the BKB was also popped there from TC, just trying to hold them back as they've lost two. Bulba should be coming back momentarily, but Dendi might have the opportunity. Look at the overcharge. Stuns them out briefly. Jump in from Demon. There goes the Kronos catch. Is on three. Can't quite know the Kragi. The Kragi laying him out, and even Kuroki will be taking down Dendi. Big golden yellow bashing it apart and will rip down Demon with the Aegis. Will be popped. Here we go. Can he go for the second onslaught here? Nope. Steps back. Another Kragi. Demon does not like that. Trying to take it to deals out his own bit of action. Jump wow. in fun. It catches out with the lasso. And now Demon will fall. Three down all day here as Navi looks to break the base and take down this tier three tower. Yeah, that's huge. Craggy here coming up. Demon not popping out. It looks like the BKB was used, but I don't know if Craggy goes through that and it's still rough coming out. Demon taking so much damage, getting brought down. They're on the chase. They want Puppet. They're not done yet. Nice four step. Way too. Wraith Fire Blast is going to connect. They'll at least get one kill off the back of this, but still, they lost so much. They didn't lose the tier three tower. X is up on Puppy. He will fall, but uh, that's uh, that's not much. Queen of Pain, quick for going down, beginning that fight. That's not what they wanted, and that gives so much to Navi. A lot of gold, but still, Liquid have the gold advantage after that engagement. Interesting. This is this game is really even right now, and Liquid do need to be careful about what fights they want to take. If you're taking fights so close to your base, if just something happens to go wrong, you're going to be looking at a set of racks to fall very, very quickly here. So Navi opt to step back now, convert, get a little extra farm as they wait for their comrade and Captain Puppy to come right back into the fight. Then he, company with Kuroki, go down to the bottom lane, look at his gear, a little extra farm, and look at that. Then he picks up the Crystalis, looking to bring out the big hits, the big crits. And, well, as RNG shows, with the help of that Craggy, he might get some serious big damage coming their way. And look at TC, counters right back with a good pickup of the Halberd. I think a lot of the problem with that last engagement was TC was not focusing down. Um, was not focusing down Dendi, and I think he was dealing with somebody to the north. I'm not sure who it was, but also you have to give props to Lavos. He played that so well. He jumped in, he had to stop onto three, followed up by that nice double edge as well. That brought Koifa down extraordinarily low. They picked up a couple of kills with that, so um, a lot of the problem has been dealing with Lavos jumping in with the stomp, and, and this is why Centaur is still such a strong hero. We didn't see it really in the first day, but day two and three, Centaur has made a resurgence into the scene. Like you mentioned, now I feel like it's Navi's time. Dendi's got level 3 grow. You talked about the Chrysalis. He's almost got his Demon Edge if he wants it. Buy the recipe outright right now for obviously the um, the Daedalus. But the, they actually have a Shiva's Guard coming out mm. for Havos as well, which is that just finished up as well. Very this nice. Is, this is good. Havos has been pretty solid with his positioning thus far. So if he waits things out for the initial jump and potentially coming out from Demon, then pops out the Shiva's, that would be very, very nice for him. And I think Navi know that they're feeling pretty confident in this one. Puppy had just grabbed up a smoke. It's in the stash right now, but if they do get a hold of it, they can look to go on the aggressive, or maybe they're potentially waiting out for the Roche and look to use it then to sneak in. But for now, Radiance back to his standard tower. separation farm attack. coming out from both teams here. I mean, as the game does progress, Liquid would like to benefit off maybe way too, picking up some extra items for himself and becoming a bit of a core himself. For now, though, just try and get more defensive. He has the Ogre Club on hand, looking to build forward into that BKB because survivability, as you saw, from that big fight coming out is just very crucial. Phonic has been split pushing like crazy. He's been sitting in these trees and he just kind of jumps out, throws a flame break every once in a while and just pushes his lane forward. Uh, there was a sonic wave expended by Quakefa, which is on cooldown for still 87 seconds. Relocate up at the top lane, Bulba needs to get out of there and needs to do so immediately. Now there's going to be the Shiva's Guard. Bulba not going to be so lucky and Liquid will cut their losses and just get out. They don't want to fight this. There are five heroes in this top lane in the top jungle for Na'Vi. And they'll make their way out like we will say we don't want to deal with this. The relocate down bottom, that's over with, but they get a quick kill on Bulba very, very fast. Dendi, 4k gold now. Ready to go. This guy is just inheriting so much additional money and resources for himself. Gonna look to build up some heavy hitting damage here, and we've seen this in many games in the past. Tiny just is going to be just a force to be reckoned with, and it's going to come down to Liquid to try their best to either kite him around or just try to take him out before he becomes a serious problem. Demon wants to go for the Chronosphere, and I don't blame him, but Denny's all the way back already. He's still looking to fight now. He's going to farm this up, and now Kuro and Denny will back away.
Daedalus pretty much completed. He's got the Demon Edge. He just needs that recipe, which is 1,000 gold, so no problem there. Um, Demon Spot's at the Illusion Room. They know where things are. There's still map control for Navi, and, and although Liquid might have a gold advantage still, I feel like in terms of momentum and in terms of just right now who has the lead, it feels like Navi has it, but Liquid will smoke up. Uh, we've seen them do this before. See if they can get anything done on the backside of this. Navi may, it may feel like Navi does have the lead, and I do feel the same, but if Liquid can take advantage of a big fight here, they can take the, the reins of this game right back. And while well, they smoke up, they're looking to shift over Phoenix to be the closest nearby, but Navi are already starting to migrate up to the north here, but let's see. Demon leaning out the front is going to go for a leap here. He does. Leaps in, catches a Colonel only on one on Phoenix. They're going to try to burst him out quickly, and they do. That's a gem on the deck right now. Denny walks the Colonel briefly, but now with the power that sets our ultimate, they're rushing right in. One big hit! Oh my god, Demon will fall. Way too is going to have to fall as well. He's reincarnate. Meanwhile, TC, though, trying to zap up as much damage as possible, but he will die eventually. And man, Navi quickly clear out two, and they're going to look to take it right back. And this is going to be how the story might unfold here for Liquid, as Navi have just began to ball out of control ever since that big team fight at the bottom early in the game. Dendi acquired that first Agnum Scepter and it's just continued to pummel away literally this liquid team. They have nothing to deal with this BKB time. He just runs at people and kills. So, I mean, and even if you zap away some of his damage, he still has like 100 left over. So Dendi is doing work. Great Fire Blast is going to go, but way too. You do have reincarnation, but you're taking a lot. Dendi is going to get hexed up. They will lose their entire courier as well. I'm not sure where it was going, but they had a thousand gold on it. So something clearly important. Staff Wizardry for Bulba. I think that might have been a Rod of Atos coming out. Buy that coming through from Puppy. Uh, rather, excuse me, Demon. There's the reincarnation flying. They really want the set of racks, but way too in trouble. It is going to fall, it looks like. Demon, no Chronos for about six seconds. They're going to lose their melee racks and maybe any set of racks in general. And they blow up Puppy, but they also lose Bulba on the backside as well. Now, Navi with Dendi rotating top. Dendi is carrying this game. He might even lead them to victory. It looks so good for Liquid, but only the Chronos on Kuroki and Havos. Now, Dendi going to town at Quetzal. Caught in the Chronos Koikla in trouble, will fall, Demon getting low as well, the Static Link, TC trying to do something here, gets tossed on top of someone, now again, Pegasus dead still, there's the Ghost Scepter, Kuroki will fall, four dead, they're turned around, yes, but they did lose the set of racks already, Dendi, if he goes down here, he has buyback, and this could be a big victory for Liquid, but how much does it mean they win the team fight, they get five, but... What can they do off the back of this? They leave one, but they are bloody, battered, and bruised after everything Dendi had just laid into them, destroying out their mid lane, doing the tier 3 tower in the top, and I believe they probably used a couple of buybacks just to oh, even yeah. try to defend it out, but it is looking really rough. Quick for scouting it out for the roast to try to just get something extra for themselves, but he's going to have to wait a little bit longer. But do Liquid have the answer to come back into this game? Since the start of that engagement in the mid lane, there have been five buybacks. Three from the side of Liquid and two from the side, of course, of Navi. So, uh, uh, kind of a crazy little engagement there. Sanj is coming out for Wakes. He looks like he'll be going for the Halberd as well. Roshan about to respawn. If there's any opportunity for Liquid to take Rosh, it's right now. And even with an Aegis, we've seen that they die so quickly. But now, I mean, they have an opportunity. Can they take Roche? Can they take another objective? Do they go for another kill? They're looking for Puppy down to the bottom lane. I'm not sure why. It's just two heroes. and I mean, Puppy's too close to the base. I mean, a lot of heroes are respawning as well. Roche just respawned. But oh. if Navi run to Roshan, they could catch Liquid in the act. And they're not even in the Roche pit yet. They don't have to run. They got to relocate if they want to get there quickly. And plus the benefit of a Centaur ultimate, they can go very, very fast. And there's already been one ping coming out. Dendi was the they one to ping it out right there. And they jump right in. And, well... Dendi, back from the dead in four more seconds. Let's see if Navi wants to try to contest this Roche. That's a big piggy. That is a rather that large. That's a lot of bacon right there. <laughs> My god. That's a lot of bacon indeed. Liquid love their bacon. They're going to take this Roche potentially. It's getting low. Vonic, oh he's going to be the one to lead the way with the Blink Dagger Lasso. It's all about Liquid not too much on the back of this. they got to get it now. The Queen of Pain will pick up the Aegis. Last open ball, but about to fall. He's tanky, but not tanky enough. He's dead. Sensor Conqueror Ultimate. Relocate coming in the backside now. Jumping away. Demon, he's got Chronosphere. He's going to use it. Can they take down Dendi? Looks like no. Kuroki getting blasted down, but that's the only one so far dead from Navi. There's the static link going as well. 
the Wraith Fire Blast, jumping in into both. TC getting stunned up, Dendi getting low. Look at the damage from Demon, he's doing it, but not enough. Now getting lower and lower. Koifa jumping in the toss back as well, cleaving down, double kill coming out for Demon. With no buyback just yet, Havos is in trouble, they'll lose Puppy. Big stop, big double edge, big flame break, but still, they've only lost two. Now, there's gonna be the respawn coming for the reincarnation. Fauna trying to get away, they can't get any further. He's gonna firefly to the low ground, Blink coming out from Koikfa. The scream is there, Funnick, he's got Flame Break in right now. He's gonna TP away and will make it out oh! alive, just barely. The last right oh. click in Funnick, the sole survivor of that team fight. And somehow, Liquid not only take Roshan, the age, maybe even the Chief, I believe, but they win a huge team fight. What a game thus far. Liquid with the start just coming out on top and then Navi looked to take control of this whole game and now the first fight back coming from Liquid and looking great but when they fight Dendi it's like watching him try to do a boss fight. There is one big tiny and all these little Liquid players just trying to bring him down and they managed to get it done. Demon with the continuous time locks just holding him in place and well unfortunately for Dendi the Craggy just wasn't quite there to help out that time and for now, Navi forced to shove all the way back into their own base, and even the Liquid, their structures are down in the base, and they are slightly wounded. They're still fighting strong. Yeah, and I think the thing is now that Dendi's BKB is getting lower and lower, they can really focus him down, but guess what? Dendi's going for a heart, maybe even a Satanic next. He's got 3.0k gold in the bank right now, and um, he's he could buy it outright if he wants to, but he does want to save for buyback. There's no way that Liquid can push off the back end of that fight, especially not with Demon and how low that Quickfa is. He's just gonna have to regen up and maybe they'll make another go sometime soon. But Liquid, they stave off the aggression for a bit. Heard of me. Um, but if you're Liquid right now, you're trying to find ways to deal with Dendi, and yes, Demon is doing a fantastic job, but you have that Mask of Madness on, it's sketchy as all heck. Just be even next to Dendi, so. Um, it's still a bit tough here for Liquid, and yeah, we'll see if they can get anything done here. And get Liquid are gonna, they're gonna be waiting back right now. They have a little more time before more of these buybacks are gonna be available, about a minute 23 there on Koikfa. Demon, about a minute as well, and then maybe the way to consider going on the offensive and trying to catch Navi outright or catch him from behind, then they could decide to smoke up. But for now, they are being scouted out with the benefit of those illusions and just kind of more congregated over here to their own side of the Ancients as Navi potentially looking to spread here. And the thing is, when you have a Tiny like this on your team with the benefit of a Wisp, don't ever count out the fact that you can go for some crazy split push rat Dota as well. Yeah, we've seen it before, and it's happened so often in Dota, so... One thing to note is that the only survivor of that last fight was Phonic, and guess what? He had the Gem of True Sight up on him, so... Had they gotten that kill, that's a gem, and more map control going the way of Liquid, rather than just kind of sitting back in their base, and... It's a bit rough. They probably would have bought another gem if they had lost it on Funny, but still. You never count out the importance of gems at this point. Wait, he does finish up his Halberd. He's had that for some time now, so... Assuming there's no BKB up on Dendi, they can Halberd him, and, and they can yeah. try to focus him down, but the burst is very difficult, especially with how tanky he is. He still has that just standard casual Reaver, nothing else following afterwards. Saving for buyback, he still has it, obviously, and by a lot, so... That's two Halberds, by the way, on their team. Just goes to show how... Uh threatening then he can be on this tiny they don't want to allow him to get too much off in his own right and well still dendy kuroki the peanut butter and jelly of the navi team right now there it is hanging side by side and yep satanic now complete so it was pretty hard to take him down before with a big boss fight but the sequel is about to begin here as it's going to be much much harder to bring him down yeah absolutely so i mean and and the good thing about the Halberd is it's not just for the Tiny, but also for Puppy as well. I mean, he's got an active scepter. He hits pretty hard with Ambush, so mm -hmm. um, everyone else is kind of not really important, but Dendi as well as Puppy, if you can burst them down, have that Heaven's Halberd, you can maybe get something done. But mm -hmm. I mean, when the fight breaks out, some of them are not important, but, you know, Funic here, lingering on the side, maybe waiting to see if Liquid want to make a jump on Havos. If he gets in there and gets an appropriate... Lockdown catches someone out with the lasso and pulls him back. He could quickly become the MVP for him. Yeah, and that, uh, if they get somebody here in this lane, that could be game. They could force him to buy back, but um, you have to be very cautious if you're liquid right now. Phonics alone, but yeah, the relocate could come in any moment. Um, although that might be suicide. They do have help around the corner with the Ghost and Puppy, but not quite there yet. Uh, Denny's sitting bottom. They're going to keep this pushed out. Pegasus Demon is continuing to farm with 3.5k gold in the bank. He wants buyback as well as another item, and I'm not sure what he goes for at this point. Um, he's not nearly as farmed, I believe, as Dendi, who should be leading the way by a wide margin. In fact, 5k net worth lead. This is Observer Ward coming out from the side of Navi. is doing so much work. 
so we'll see if any sentries come through. They have the gem actually on way too, so they'll just counter ward real quick, and that means that Fonic is he's got no more vision here, so he's gonna have to be careful. Boy, did you notice well, Koifa on this Queen of Pain. A lot of gold reserved for himself, obviously gonna set some of that aside for a buyback if needed, but starting to build into some damage with that Demon Edge here, and that's gonna be very important if he can keep himself very evasive and around the outside, just try to kite around a bit, then he could deal out a fair amount of damage and try to bring him down. Yeah, I mean, attack. but he's just so squishy, he doesn't have a BKB, mm -hmm. he's got int treads, which I don't think he really switches in the fight. Um, hey, I mean, with 2k HP, it's actually not bad, but still, I mean, you're talking about this guy who's gonna be for maybe like 1.5 to anywhere from 1.5 to like 2k maybe more than that um with overcharge his attack speed it's gonna go like crazy so um his aegis is down by the way and so if navi were waiting for it to expire before striking now this is gonna be it yep they have some buybacks as well both teams with three heroes of buyback and some of them really important uh that rider not with one i think that's one of the most important things if he doesn't get a blast off all of a sudden um you're fighting four versus five without the lockdown that you perhaps wanted so yeah, I mean, it just comes down to when Navi wants to fight. Yeah, I mean, this is as farmed as Dendi's gonna get. He doesn't even need bots if he's got Kuroki with him, uh, but he might even just buy them just in case, so... Uh, maybe just save up for bots and buy back, buy the bots, and then go from there, so... That's probably the, what they're waiting on, maybe another item coming mm -hmm. out for Navi. I don't know if anyone's building anything right now. There's a ghost after on Kuroki that can't be... it's not gonna be turned into an ethereal blade. So yeah, I mean, they have their items, they're ready to go, it just... I think it's maybe bots or... Just kind of playing passively, split pushing and choking out Liquid, seeing who's going to make the first mistake. We'll see. Kind of surprised. I've seen in the past teams like the Sneaky Nyx Assassins on the NA Dota side, and when they like to play, they're tiny, and especially going up something like the likes of an Orchid and what have you, they do favor a Manta style build typically on this tiny. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it's not looking like it's going to be an option here for Dendi unless he wants to go completely crazy, maybe drop the power treads just for Lion Kuroki to get into the mix with the additional move speed and get that. I mean, who really knows at this point in the game? But for now, it's very clear that Navi are controlling the pace of the game. They decide when it's the time to fight, and for Liquid, they have to be careful. Oh my. Wow, they just walked right past Funic. They, oh. wow, Funic was keeping that, he was watching that for Denny and Kuroki. He was maybe their last line of watching and defense, and if they find out Denny and Kuroki here, that could be huge. For, oh, they walked attack. right by him. They were so close to breaking that smoke with Funic, but it wasn't there, but the thing is, though, while this is happening, they're just pushing in mid and the top lane. Wait, who's the only one farming here? Observer Ward comes out, they see Dendi and Kuroki, but no one's there. Bulba has to get away, he has to get back home. Okay. Relocate onto Demon, he gets caught out. There's gonna be the last, so Demon will fall. He's got buyback, but that's what they were waiting for. Dendi got hexed up, but it's a bit too late. And meanwhile, Wait, who blinks away, gets out of there in time. Koifa might not be so lucky. He's got a blink and he will have to TP afterwards. He's gonna work it up oh. on Funic. Blink away, TP, BKB, Flame Break, Koifa in trouble now. Dyer's Getting chased down, the big man the on the run. Koifa's gonna blink right into Kuroki. He needs the Shadow Pick as well. Scream of pain, but Koifa will fall, it looks like, in a toss back. And the hit coming from Dendi. That's a lot of damage. Good patience by Funic, just stalking out Koifa, just constantly keeping an eye on him and just hunting him down and not letting him get back. Yep, both of them do have buyback available here. Don't want to have to spend it unless they have to, and... Well, they might. They're Navi looking to. to push forward, and even if they do bait out the buyback, Navi could just contest and still continue to push forward, because then if they win that fight, it's over. I mean, yeah. I mean, at this point, they're actually going to catch up Puppy. Nice little uh, kill here. He has buyback, but they could push it without him, I feel like. It's a four on mm -hmm. three, so it really comes down to if they just want to keep going. They have relocate still, and that's what they're waiting on. Maybe trying to push him with a Vos, but if he gets caught out all of a sudden, then yeah, a couple heroes die. They have buyback on anyone, on everyone, rather. Except for Funny, which he's gonna have in one hit. Quick for Will dead. buy out here. Long Maybe you just go to this top lane. The Queen. Roki and the rest of the squad are gonna back off. So they force out the big buyback. That's the important thing. He was down for like a hundred and some odd seconds and he has to use another buyback there, so that's really important. Yeah, so Quickfo will also start the uh, cooldown timer of his next buyback, which yep. they might try to prolong till. You got another uh, five minutes, Giant 30 seconds until that's, that's going to be. Attack. So Navi, it's going to be their choice if they want to try to fight before that opportunity does come up. But they do instead decide to step back. Dendi, continuation of farm here. A new BKB now complete on himself. So 10 seconds to try to take down the big gold monster. That's that's what they were waiting for, actually, now that you think about it. It wasn't the bots. It was the new BKB coming out for Dendi. Mm -hmm. So, um... 
expect him to go here in a little bit, and I don't know if there's any way like we can really bring him down. They're gonna last oh, open way too. Yes, he has reincarnation, but they don't really want to fight on top of this. Actually, they didn't really do much there. That was just a waste of a lasso. Way and too, a just too much health. Um, Firefly, lasso, and I guess sticking in palm doesn't really do much at this point, so way too fine with that, I guess. A bit of an awkward engagement when he catches and pulls him back. Oh, Nothing's going to come of it, but he also even BKBs himself to not get caught by the Rayfire Blast, but there was going to be a follow regardless. And look at this. Liquid are like, this is our time. They shift over, and they're going to go for Roche here, but if uh, Na'Vi have an idea, they're going to just bull rush forward into this top lane. The Rax is already exposed, and with Dendi hitting so hard, they'll go down very quick. Wow, the weave is cleared out, and here we go. Can they defend? They're going to need more than just a simple chip of man from Bulba. Well, that range rack died about two hits out. Demon BKBs up. He's looking to try to go on Dendi. We'll just catch it, but they have the refresher as well. Last is coming in. TC gets lasted up now. Double. Chrono is going to go through the relocate as well. They're looking for Kuroki. That's their best effort. Dendi is BKB now done. The Sonic Wave coming through doesn't do much. Kuroki, Ghost Scepter's up, still alive. TC chasing after him. Two dead on Navi. They're actually turning his fight around. Dendi getting stunned up. Way too with the Wraith Fire Blast. TC still going to town. Koifa, impetus damage. He's taking it. Puppy might get bashed out. Just going to get right click down. Avos in some trouble. Reincarnation from Way too. Demon jumps back in. The refresher. The Chrono Spear did so much work there. Avos. It's going to be a team wipe, it looks like, as TC and the rest of Liquid. They're going to take down all five. They have to defend their base, but damn. Did not see that one coming. They literally pulled out the tactics of caging the beast. Both Chrono Spears used to try to lock Dendi, and they were trying to clear out everything else about and around. They threw out the Mystic Flare on Dendi, trying to wake him down even further, but it was a matter of just holding him there in place and trying to take care of the rest of the Navi squad. It looked like it tried to be a valiant effort from Kuroki to save Dendi from that lockdown, but it was not going to happen. So another impressive defense coming out from Liquid, but still more damage was done to the base. Arax had fallen on the top lane. And still, both racks is taken down the mid lane, and now Liquid move promptly so into the Roche pit, and they're going to go ahead and take him down and get a hold of the Aegis. Yeah, and this is huge, actually. And what you're seeing right now is if Denny gets Chrono Sphered up, there's really not that much damage elsewhere. Puppy he might even get Halberd in. They can focus him down as well. So all that damage, Liquid was able to survive through all of it, really. And they can just kind of keep going. There's an MKB now for Koikvo on the Queen of Pain, so the damage is very real for him. There still is buyback on every single hero for Na'Vi, so they can kind of keep doing this. But Liquid are slowly but surely jumping back into this game. Again, like you said, they lost that range Rax, and with Relocate, there are ways to get into the base and just take down some towers if there's, you know, the mid lane pushed in. So that's also Liquid's job, is pushing out this mid lane, making sure that it's not inside of the base at any point in time. Yeah, this gets really finicky right now for both of these teams. Liquid looking for a good time to try to take it back towards the Navi side and maybe do their first set of base damage here. Only the bottom lane going to be available to try to take a high ground without you know, pushing through a tier 2. But then you're always going to be worried about the constant threat of maybe a relocate backdoor from Dendi and he'll be able to clear out your base before you even know it. So it's going to be more slow-paced play, especially on the side of Liquid. And it's going to really come down to how they want to try to game plan this one out. Oh, look at this gold graph, man. It's all over the place. I don't know what's happening. It's ridiculous. Jesus Christ. <laughs> and the 12,000 experience lead for Liquid as well, so... Something that I don't think many of us were expecting. It's all over the place. Plus, also, Refresher Orb is getting built by TC, so... If you don't have damage, uh, you're going to have it rather soon with Eye of the Storm, so... Mm. Wickfa does clear out the top wave with his Sonic Wave. That's no that. Agnum, so... Yeah. It's still going to take a long time before it is back up and available, but that kind of shows that maybe Liquid are considering weighing it out before trying to take the fight. Or I feel like he just doesn't care about that ability, honestly. He's just like, he, that's the second I time mean, he's done that. They all have BKBs and ways to avoid it, plus pipes, so it's kind of, maybe it is more functional now to just try to avoid any heavy pushes coming their way, so that's very much true as well. He could be, at this point, doing more damage just right clicking than that's not way, but jump in mid lane! They're going to catch out Havos! Havos is pretty big, it's going to take a lot of work to take it down, but he does get it. So 90 seconds now for Havos to come back, and no buyback for him. Well, Not for another 40 seconds at least, so yeah. they could try to push forward here, but they gotta keep watch out. Top lane, Dendi and Kuroki slowly pushing it in, and Liquid, yes, they will have to pull back. There's a Refresher Orb up for Demon right now, but it looks like he's not gonna use it, so... Just gonna wait so that he can have a double chrono for Dandy. I think that's the most important thing, is that he can't really refresh after he's uh, used that first attack. chronosphere. If he uses one to get a pick off elsewhere, you have to kind of save the double chronosphere for Dendi. That's the most important thing, I think, at this point. So, yeah. Top lane getting pushed in yet again. The ranged uh, creeps are being kind of annoying, but 
Liquid are coming through. They might even try to find Dandy or Kuroki out. In fact, Kuroki is kind of far away. The TP scroll is going to tether through. Bulb is not going to get there in time. Uh, not that they knew that they were there, I believe, so. Very right. uh, strenuous game right now for both teams. Our day number three here, the International Four. This game matters for both of them. Oh, yeah. Well, at the mid-level right now, so each win is very, very important to try to move on. Definitely secure a spot. Move forward, try to get into Key Arena, and, well, Navi, one of those teams that like to push on forward, typically struggle with the early group stages and then always have that comeback factor, always being in the finals of previous TIs and had a bit of a hot and cold performance thus far. But what looked like a very rough and shaky start at this one, Liquid had a very promising start. Mm -hmm. But ever since the one team fight at the bottom, and they've been rallying behind Dendi and allowing him to push forward and really take it to Liquid. But Liquid at the end here, a valiant defense coming out time and time again, trying to lock down the beast and take it right back to him. It's just really come out on the back of a couple of mistakes of Liquid, I think. That's that's really why they lost the sets of racks. They just kind of got caught out. They didn't have the items to deal with Dendi. They really didn't focus him down the best possible way. And they're going to jump. And Dendi was looking for somebody, but decided against it. They see Havos farming up, but they don't go for the Chronosphere. And you can tell Demon's getting a little bit antsy, I feel like. He has to back away, but Havos on the backside here, he's ready to jump on him. In fact, everybody oh, is no. here. Demon in some trouble. He has buyback, and he's going to have to use it. I'm not sure what he's doing there, but that was just... That too, might that's... be considered the Jimmy Classic, I would suppose, but yeah. just out of position. After you don't catch someone out, just just get out of there. There's yeah, no point, but long. Funic, the Batrider, man. Time and time again, right on the scene to try to get the appropriate lockdown. Catches him out, pulls him down. No surprise, not going to push forward. At least get him to buy back out. And then it's a matter of if they want to take the fight. But luckily for Demon, if he does buy back, still has a hold of both... Chronospheres to use to try to lock down Dendi. Yeah, and that's kind of the point where you're just like, well, maybe we should have put the Aegis on Demon because maybe he's going to make that kind of play. Whereas, what is Quake going to do for you with an Aegis? And throw up the Observer Ward in the base, and I'm not sure that Liquid saw this. Way 2 does have the gem, so he'll be able to counter it immediately. But for 53 seconds, Demon is down. He's forced to buy back. Dendi's going to run in momentarily. He's going to run back in as well. He's going to get hexed up. Now the Chronosphere about to come through. Just the next to the backside. Funic now going okay. to last off on Demon, but Dendi getting blown up. He can't BKB. Relocate out. Not there. Havos getting brought down as well. There's the Wraith Fire Blast. Demon another Chronosphere. Connects on Kroki. He wants him first and foremost. Havos about to fall. Bolo grabs a kill on the Kroki, and now Havos will die as well. Another great defense coming up from Liquid. Demon's Chrono position was so good there. Kuroki tried to tether forward to pull out Dendi, but he ended up tethering himself into the Chrono. It was just too wide and he couldn't pull him out. Oh, mid lane. Puppy getting caught up with Funic now TPing further. Four staff away, just making sure Puppy stays alive. They have to force out some buybacks here. I feel like otherwise it's just not worth it at this point. I mean, they're pushing down mid. They've got to get something done with this. Let's see. <laughs> this is a very tense game. He's Waiting to see Liquid. Seconds. Tier 2 still standing here. Should be able to quickly take this one down. Navi can wait out. They don't have to necessarily buy back just yet. If they can save the extra money and obviously save that buyback, they would love to do so here. You got another 38 seconds before Dendi's into the fight here. 40 for the Vost. Just very cautious play, but now keep in mind, you're not going to have the benefit of those two Chronos. So even if Navi come back into the fight, they're going to want to fight sooner than later so they don't have all those skills to work with. Tier 2 does fall. Liquid appear to push back and go right for the tier 2 there on the top lane. Yeah, this is dangerous though. I don't know if they should go for this. The wave is not really there yet. TC is not even close to getting the wave. They're going to try to backdoor it though. And they're going to clip it. They really want to defend this one. I don't think that Liquid should go for this. They're going to back away and TP out immediately. This is the smart play. Uh, specifically, Demon needs to get out. He's got five minutes still. Funic looking to pursue someone. He might even find Jimmy. Demon, time walk, he's got it in one second. The lasso's gonna go the relocate as well. He can't afford to die, oh, and he will. No. That might be the game. That is huge. Eye of the Storm, the refresher is up, but Jim, Demon is down for 100 seconds. They needed a TP out, he didn't have one. Oh my goodness. Funic, your eyes in the skies right now, just flying it out and catching out another, just knowing when the right time to jump in and lock someone down and just conveniently dending right back into the living life. and. Just get re relocated over, and unfortunately, Demon falls. He's got 86 seconds before he's even going to be back into the fight. No Kronos. Nothing to stop Dendi from going on a huge tirade here in the top lane. What is Liquid going to do to defend this one out? I'm not sure. Wait, he's going to go forward first. 
actually taking a lot of damage is Dandy. He's gonna get forced out of the Mystic Flare. I mean, that's a lot. Havos jumping in, though, stopping on Koikpa. Way too in trouble. Lasso, Koikpa about to fall. He's going to have to buy back Eye of the Storm. Hasn't been refreshed yet. Now it will be. Dandy trying to fight on TT. He needs to live here. Funnick backing away. They don't want to fight in the Eye of the Storm. They need, they need to fight somebody. They need to get a kill here. Now coming back in, Havos jumping on TC. Too much damage. Dandy going in. TC about to fall. He's got no Eye of the Storm. He has to buy back. Where was Koikpa in that engagement? He wasn't ready to go. Oh, Dendi gets hexed up here. This is not look good for Liquid. And they are sick. Dendi right now. Shove him back up again. CC'd up now. Making the go on his majesty. Looking to bring him down one time. And he does fall. No reincarnate available. Now making a move on the racks right now. And they clear it out. Top and mid. Taken down and apart. And they just want the throne. Dendi moves forward. I think there was a tower there briefly. But Dendi with the big, big damage. Looking to take it right to the base. TC though wants to remove some of that damage. Static links to come. Demon has 10 more seconds before he's back. Big <laughs> Mystic Flare dropped on Dendi. But he still lives. Taking it right to the throne. Halfway life. Dendi ends up falling. Not going to buy back and get back into the fight for now. But of most, the one still standing. Chopping away. And here it goes. Pegasus with the jump in. Throws out the Chronosphere on Havos, Havos though, trying to send a little bit back with the return, but he is a big boy, soaking up lots of that damage, the second Chronosphere catches on the others, but not Havos, Havos is going to just sit here and try to get as much damage before he ultimately will fall and be taken down, Dendi actually did end up buying back and going towards the bottom lane, and well, I don't know, he, he actually fought back and tried to TP to a creep that TC killed, oh. so he couldn't get there. And in fact, Demon actually crowed on top of where he was TP too. Oh. I don't think there's any way, though. Liquid are going to be able to win this one. There's just too much. Quick is down for 84 seconds. Bulba will buy back, but what's that going to do for you? The Catapult doing a lot of work to these towers, and finally they will turn their attention to Demon, but... I think that might be it. The Chronosphere is not there for another 41 seconds. I don't yeah, see any way Liquid death fall into this shrine. And they're going to do so. Jump in. There goes the last one. They grab up Demon and he will fall. Shivas to fly out as well, but that is easily more than enough. GG is going to be... Unfortunately for the Liquid boys, their streak will end for today. And Na'Vi managed to grab up their first win of day number three here at the International. What a game. Uh, a game that felt solely in Liquid's favor for some time, and then all of a sudden, Navi come back, Dendi jumps in, does so much damage, Craig exterior, the tiny, just right-clicking everyone down. Uh, so well played from Dendi. Funnick with great Batrider play. You could argue that his last with the end of the game on Demon was what won them that game. And so, uh, unbelievable. We are going to take a break. We're done for this stream. We are going to have a little bit of a lunch break.